Gotta get that boca. Get that sick boca going on here. Sick boca. What is up, homies? My name is Felix, and I'm here back again with another video for you all today. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys some free plug-in alternatives to famous hardware synths. So if there's one thing that most people know about synthesizers in general, it's that they're really, really expensive, and especially the old vintage ones. So obviously, with these being free plugins, they're not going to be 100% perfect recreations, but some of them are actually really, really good. But I would say that all of them are good enough to save you several thousand dollars. So yeah, make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below, along with the playlist of songs I've produced my beatstorm my discord all that stuff go check it out if you'd like to do so and now we can get into this video i'm gonna put on the screen whether they're available for mac and or windows and if it's on 32 or 64 bit and also all the links will be in the description so the first synth on my list is the roland jx 8p which usually goes for about a thousand dollars and it's not the most famous synth ever but in my opinion it's one of the most underrated synths of the 80s and the free plugin alternative that we have for it is called pg8x and this might not be some people's cup of tea because it does not come with any presets at least mine didn't come with any presets so you're gonna have to make your own sounds but I figure that'll be fine for a lot of synth lovers out there because I figure if you're into this stuff you probably know a thing or two about sound design so I just made this little pad here super classic kind of synth sound I also just whipped up this little sound here which I think is pretty nice That's all I'm gonna do for now though, because I'm not like a sound design master or anything like that. But as you can see, it has all your basic controls here, two oscillators with a couple different waveforms. It's got a little chorus feature, which is personally my favorite. And then it has your envelopes and LFOs and all that other stuff as well. So yeah, in my opinion, it's got a really great sound. And if you're well versed in sound design, the possibilities are totally endless. So number two on the list here is the Mini Moog, which I'm pretty sure goes for about like $8,000 if you wanna cop one of these, because it's one of the most famous synths ever. So kind of surprisingly, it was very hard to find a good plugin emulation but the plugin that I was able to find is called VK1 Viking Synthesizer and the interface is kind of ugly to be honest but the sounds are really really good actually I'll play through a couple presets and you'll hear what I mean So as you just heard, it's perfect for getting those basses and leads that the Mini Moog is known for since it's monophonic. There actually is quite a few presets to mess around with, which is really nice. And then also it has all your typical synthesizer controls here. Three oscillators, filters, envelopes, LFOs, you name it. And you can also adjust the glide rate, which is pretty cool. So next on my list, I'm just grouping all the Juno keyboards into one, the Juno 6, the Juno 60, and the Juno 106. I know they're different in small ways, like the 60 has an arpeggiator, the 106 doesn't, whatever the small little specifications are, but all three of them sound really similar. The Juno 6 and Juno 106 pretty much go for around like $2,000, but if you want a Juno 60, it's gonna cost you probably around like $4,000. Or if you wanna spend no money at all, you can go and download the Tau Uno 62 plugin, Uno or Uno, whatever you wanna call it. This is essentially just a Juno keyboard simulation type deal. However, there is a couple things that I have to complain about with this one. The first thing is that the presets they give you are really not that good. And also just the whole plugin interface is kind of weird and it's kind of hard to use, but they do have the classic Juno chorus though. And there's actually two free plugins that are just Juno chorus emulations, one called Tal Chorus and another one from Arturia that I'm pretty sure is free. But anyways, with the Tal Uno plugin, the lack of good presets is a little bit disappointing. However, though, I just went into Google and typed Tal Uno 62 presets and I was able to find a pretty good bunch of sounds from like the first search result. All right, so next on my list is the Ensonic SQ80, which usually sells for about $800, but sometimes cheaper. And this one is far from like the most famous synth ever. However, it is one of my personal favorites ever. And the plugin alternative to it is really, really good. It's called SQ8L. And you guys have definitely heard about it before, either from me or from somebody else, because it's a great plugin. It really just has an amazing analog vintage warmth kind of feel to it. If you listen to a couple of these presets, you'll hear what I'm talking about.
all of those sounds were in like the first 15 presets and you want to know how many more presets there is? This is honestly one of the best free plugins that exists and dare I say one of just the best plugins in general. There's also like a bunch of different tabs within here that you can mess around with too. So all the LFO buttons do something, all the envelope buttons do something else, all these do something, and all these other ones do something as well. If you're used to doing sound design with the typical like knobs and buttons and stuff, this is going to be a little bit different and it might take some time to get used to the workflow and everything in here. However though, it's totally worth it because this is just a great plugin. Alright, so number five on the list is the Yamaha CS80, which which is a very, very famous synthesizer, and it's literally impossible to find one. When I was looking it up, I was barely even able to find the price for one of these things. The only thing I was able to find was a sold listing on eBay that said it sold for $8,000, which is a crazy price. But it makes sense that these are hard to find because they weigh literally like 200 pounds. But however, the free plugin alternative does not weigh 200 pounds. It's called Arminator 2, and despite its kind of ugly appearance, it's actually really, really good. As you can hear by a couple of these presets, which it has a lot of them, by the way, this is another plugin that has some really nice kind of analog of warmth and vintage vibes to it. I don't know what of that I'm going to use. All right, that one was pretty fire. So yeah, as you can hear, tons of just totally amazing presets. You don't even need to put effects on a plugin like this because every single sound just puts you in like a world of its own. This is honestly just an awesome plugin and I'm really surprised I didn't find out about it sooner. Um, I'm not even gonna talk about the knobs for this one. There are so many, I literally don't even know how to like. All right, so next on the list is the OBXA, which is one of the most famous synths ever and it usually goes for around like $10,000. It's very, very expensive, but that is why we have a free alternative called OBXD. It is just so good. It gives you a ton of presets and then also obviously the normal synthy features with the envelopes, oscillators, filters, blah, blah, all that stuff. Just listen to these sounds. So obviously it's got some great sounds in there. It sounds very similar to the OBXA. But anyways, there's not a whole lot I can say about this one. It's just pretty awesome and you should go try it out. All right, so next on the list is the Yamaha DX7, which probably quite a few people have heard of. It usually goes for around $700, but I've seen a couple that were actually a lot cheaper. But the free plugin alternative to the DX7 is a plugin called Dext. And if I'm being 100% honest, I've never been really particularly fond of this plugin. There's a couple good presets in here like these ones. But there's only about 30 presets and the whole interface is just really confusing to me at least, but I'm sure you guys will be able to figure it out. There's really not a whole lot I can say about this plugin. As you can see, there's a ton of options in here. At least for me, I'm not the biggest fan, but it's not a terrible plugin. All right, so last but not least is the Roland JP8000, which you can find in about like the $800 range. Not the most famous synth out there, but I just included it because I already have a plugin for it, which is Super Wave P8. And with this plugin, I actually really like the whole layout and the interface and everything. It looks super cool and super retro and the presets are pretty nice as well even though there's not a whole lot of them. So quite a few good presets in here and I like the way that the plugin is laid out as well. You got your filters and envelopes and everything right here laid out for you. You got the oscillators right here. You also have quite a lot of options too. There's a bunch of different waveforms, a bunch of different LFO types and stuff like that. So yeah, another great plugin and personally I've been sleeping on this one for quite a while. So yeah, that basically does it for my list of free plugin alternatives to famous synths. However, I figured I'd add in a couple at the end here which are paid alternatives which are still much cheaper than the actual synth itself. The first one is for the Roland Jupiter 8 which I have only been able to find for around 
around like $30,000. But the much cheaper plug-in alternative is called Tel J8. You can buy it for $85 and it's super, super good. It sounds very, very similar to the Jupiter 8. Another synth is the Prophet 5, which usually goes for I think like six to $7,000. And I really wanted to put this on the main list because everybody knows the Prophet 5, but I just for the life of me could not find a good free alternative to it. But there is a plugin called Repro 5, which costs about $150. And it's a really, really, really good emulation of it. And the last one on this little extra list is the ARP 2600, which you can, I'm pretty sure only find like a Korg remaster remake type of thing for about $7,000. But the cheaper plugin alternative is called Time Warp, Time Warp, whatever. It costs about $100, but it is a pretty good emulation of the ARP 2600. And obviously I should also mention the elephant in the room here that Arturia makes software versions of all of these synths that I mentioned here today. And the prices for each one of these plugins are usually like $150 or $200. Bear in mind that I have not used any of these paid ones. I've just watched a couple videos. However, I do have Analog Lab, which has presets from all of Arturia's synth software emulation plugins inside of it. And most of those presets are really, really good. So I'd assume all their synth plugins are really good too. So yeah, that is pretty much gonna do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite synth ever. Anyways, make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I produce, my beats are, my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out if you'd like to do so and I will see you guys next time. I've been laying low, waiting for the payroll. Once I get it, no, I got it, I ain't never letting go. Well, shit, cause I said so. Hit a KO with a sick flow. Pick up, talk shit, get money, pay phone. Make sure I get what I